What did you experience while you were clinically dead? Redditor 41, I suffered a cardiac arrest fibrillation while playing sport. An AED was applied and my heart restarted after several minutes. During the ambulance ride I crashed out once more but was successfully revived. I was held in an artificial coma for three days. My only memory of the whole experience was the feeling of suffocation. While recuperating I was watching Game of Thrones. The scene where Jon Snow is reanimated came on. Wow. It hit me like a brick. That inescapable feeling of drowning came back very strongly. 010 would not recommend. Redditor 42, I drowned in a flash flood. Was out for 10 minutes. I didn't see a tunnel or light nor did I see my life flash by me. What I did see were the lives of everybody else I ever touched run by me. All the hurt I caused, intentionally or not, I felt as my own and no ego to find excuses for it, just the realization that I sucked big time, but then all the positive effects I got to feel too. The most important thing I ever did, turned not to be running into a burning building and waking up five families, nope, it was a simple smile I gave the cashier at the local supermarket. Those free to use smiles can have some serious ripple effects. One of these days I'll write it all down. Redditor 43, rupture ectopic pregnancy causing mass internal bleeding. I remember feeling eerily calm when came back. It felt like I had been given a gift to be made of aware of my own death so I could make amends and think of all the beautiful experiences in my life. I am not sure if there is an afterlife or not. But I do think that my brain released a chemical so that I would feel no more pain in my final moments. Everything felt okay. Peaceful. Redditor 44, I was dead for about 5 minutes while someone performed CPR on me after a car accident stop using your phones while driving people. I then died two more times on the way to the hospital and had to undergo brain surgery on arrival. For me, I saw both of my grandfathers, as well as my grandmother who had passed 9 months before. I went to give them a hug, but they kept backing up saying not yet. When I woke up from my coma, and after some time for the medications to wear off, I told the doctors about this. They said it's because my brain is fighting to make connections to stay alive that I'll revisit past memories of people I once or currently knew. I call bull and I'm a very scientific guy. Honestly though, it made me grow up. I was dating my girlfriend at the time for 4 years, and she stood by my side and literally wiped my ass while in the hospital. Less than a year later, I proposed, and we now have a beautiful baby girl. It made me realize how quickly life can change and how useless it is to waste your time getting mad over the little things. Life's just too short for that, and you need to always try to look at the positives in any scenario. If you can't find a positive, use it as a learning experience for next time and move on. I will tell you one thing though, I'm glad I don't remember how it physically felt. I don't think I'd have been able to handle that. Redditor 45, I remember struggling to breathe to the point where I knew something was really wrong. I don't know when, but at some point I knew the consequence and I had to accept my fate. I don't actually remember being dead because a person's brain has no activity when one dies. It basically has ruined my life as I suffered brain damage, severe short-term memory loss it is also difficult to hold as many variables in my head as I used to and my attention span has since been shot and I had to piece together what happened to me over the past seven years as the people who conspired against me also swore each other to secrecy in order to cover it up. Redditor 46, I would say it felt empty, dark, vast, but really those words failed to describe what I was feeling because there was no conscious understanding of what feelings were, at that time. I couldn't even perceive the lacking, the emptiness. In retrospect, it didn't seem like a dream soon forgotten or a blackout in memory. There wasn't an immediate continuation of things that happened before and things that happened after. I felt like I was removed, but wasn't sure what from. Like I had been stuck in time, and there wasn't a way to account for this experience because it couldn't have possibly existed without time. To this day I remember it as the time I existed the way a scream exists in a vacuum. That surgery experience made me lose my faith in my religion for the better. I'd say I believe in a God still but I now I believe that at death, we just stop, existing. Redditor 47, I had my aortic valve replaced nearly one year ago. 
The surgery required my heart to be stopped and my body placed on a cardiopulmonary bypass heart lung machine, with my blood cooled to about 70 F. Although I didn't have intraoperative aid during my procedure, the standard that doctors try to achieve with anesthesia is a flatline, complete neuronal cessation. So, for a few hours, my heart was stopped, and my brain was effectively stopped. I had no near-death experience or anything like that. I remember the bright lights of the ore, I tried to remember to thank the medical staff in case I died and couldn't tell them later. And then I was waking up in the cardiac ICU. I was smiling and talking within a couple minutes of consciousness. Am I at all freaked out by what I went through? A. Nah. Redditor 48, recently overdosed on heroin after trying it for the very first time years of drug abuse led to this point of actually buying it and trying it. I blacked out off the H like you would after drinking too much. I passed out in my car at a gas station and the people inside called 911. I went from blacking out after ripping some lines of H to waking up in the back of an ambulance feeling good enough to drive. I was hazy in the head and drove feeling worse after leaving a bar. It's crazy what Narcan can do. EMS told me I barely live he had to resuscitate me and hit me with the Narcan. My chest is still sore and it was like blacking out off liquor. As for my life Ike how it has fully impacted changed things this event happened 4 days ago. I would like to think it has changed things forever. Redditor 49, well, I wasn't clinically dead, but I see my story has a lot of overlap with others here so I'll share anyway. After the birth of my second daughter I started hemorrhaging and at first the interventions weren't helping. I'm a pretty anxious high strung person so I always assumed I'd panic when dying but instead I felt totally fine. I mean, I felt bad for my poor husband to be stuck solo with two kids, one a newborn, but other than feeling apologetic for abandoning him it was like oh, okay, I guess this is it, goodbye. Surprisingly chill while everyone around me was being frantic. Then obviously I didn't die. And now I'm pretty much as terrified of death as before, I've got so much to get done, I really don't want to die. But now I know that in the moment that's not what it feels like. In the moment it's just, like, okay. When you're dying it's out of your hands anyway. My religion requires that I believe in the afterlife but I'm gonna be honest, maybe this is me talking as a parent of young kids but all I want death to be is like going to sleep and never having to be woken up in the middle of the night again. Redditor 50 I had an allergic reaction to latex during a surgery and my heart stopped for a bit under 2 minutes I was 9 years old. 30 years later, I remember it as if it was yesterday. Which is odd because most of the time I couldn't really tell you what I had for lunch earlier in the day. It felt peaceful, comfortable, and energizing. I saw my body on the operating table. I ended up in a colorful tunnel with a bright light further away, I couldn't see my feet yet I knew I was walking. A lady that looked a lot like my mother but obviously wasn't and didn't know came towards me and wanted me to go with her. After she kept insisting, I said no and pulled away. I opened my eyes and I was in the ICU or whatever the room you wake up in after major surgery. Months later, I was looking at photo albums with my mother and I recognized the lady. It was my great grandmother, Redditor51, I've commented on this before. I had an alcohol septal ablation in 2015. Unfortunately the procedure killed the nerve center of my heart so it didn't get the signal to beat. I was sitting with my dad and daughter having dinner in the hospital and the next thing I knew, I was being externally paced with pads to zap through your chest. I didn't notice going unconscious. While I was unconscious, I don't remember having any experience, except perhaps as I was being resuscitated and slowly getting oxygenated. All was black and I barely thought something was wrong. I had to be resuscitated 12 times in total and each time I came back, I got scared because I knew I could just slip away without knowing it. The zaps wrecked my nerves for a while. I got a pacemaker and it has been working lima charm, I didn't have any out of body experiences or see God or anything. Redditor 52, been dead don't really remember much except being cold afterwards. All in all it, it was painful as they broke my ribs. Beyond that I felt disconnected as it happened. How did it change my life? Made me ultra paranoid about respiratory infections as that's what almost took me out and made me utterly humorless about proper sanitation which is useful in my line of work. 
Comically this rampant paranoia has left me very well prepared for COVID-19 which has been rather convenient for those around me as I am paranoid not utterly selfish. Yeah I already had a bunch of the stuff that's in short supply of late on hand. Paranoid people tend to share because they don't want you to get sick because you could infect them. Lol I must stop the unclean from spreading. Nothing much else to report. No heck fire, bright light or any of that jazz. Redditor 53, I had a stroke at 16. It was during school, I was playing road hockey and just kind of. Stopped moving, and stared at this redhead kid before falling to the ground. My friends thought the kid hit me so they went after him while I lay completely conscious yet unable to move or speak. My right side was completely numb and talking just produced. Odd sounds. Teachers were screaming for help and yet I always remember that one of the strangest feelings was being so aware of everything around me yet I couldn't do a thing about it. I had several instances on the ride over to the hospital in the ambulance only to be given a at the time experimental drug to solve the clotting in my heart had a hole in it and brain. Right before that drug is when I recall drifting a bit. My mind and body felt separated and scattered, and I saw darkness. It was unsettling. Three months later and I have the full ability to talk, walk, run, or do anything else I set my mind to. The human body is weird man. Redditor 54, my grandmother technically died of COVID and was brought back. She said she could hear people talking, machines beeping, but it was really muffled and she couldn't make any words out. Felt like she was floating into blackness. She was expecting to see a light or Jesus or her parents, something, but now she is worried she's going to hell. I am not religious although I try to encourage her by saying God knew it wasn't her time so didn't go to greet her. Redditor 55, this happened to my husband. Worst day of my dot life he said he just felt like he was sleeping and didn't realize he stopped breathing and his heart stopped. He woke up to me sobbing on the side of his hospital bed. Redditor 56, years ago I OD'd and was seconds away from passing on. While the guys in the ambulance were pumping me with Narcan I had this crazy vivid dream going on where I was zooming at the speed of light and there were people on all sides of me telling me to let go, and the people who were with me weren't helping and to stop them from doing it. It's hard to explain in text but everything seemed to be moving so fast and I could hear these voices so clearly. It was a strange thing to remember when I was conscious again. I've been sober since that day, almost 10 years ago. Redditor 57 you should watch this TV show called I Survived, Beyond and Back. In it, people share their experiences of dying and going to heaven. And going to heck. Those going to heck episode are scary as fuck. Redditor 58, drowning when I was younger. It was a brief fade into a state of awareness of non-existence without thought or feeling. My vision cut out. It didn't fade to black, I just stopped seeing. Then, my thoughts. It was like all aspects of my consciousness from my senses, my memories, my emotions, and my sense of self was just fading away in an instant. It reminded me of an old computer monitor TV screen, where you get that staticky blip and then the after image on the black screen fizzles away. It felt amazing. I think that bothered me for a few years, but after reading a lot of different philosophical and scientific material, I came to the conclusion that our entire sense of self is an illusion that doesn't really exist in the first place. It made me realize that life was essentially just a dream about being a person. All of it was just so simple and easy to let go of. Every aspect of my conscious experience can be completely fizzled away in a mere moment, and it was incredibly relieving, in a way. The curtains were closing at the end of a puppet show with no audience, and I could finally turn to face the puppet master only to find it was called nothing. Now, I hope that's the actual afterlife because that experience of non-existence was very reassuring once I spent time reflecting on it. There was no pain, no fear, no anxiety, no worry. It's impossible to truly describe, but falling asleep is probably the most similar. All these weird, paranormal astral projection stories are either BS or a dream hallucination of some kind. There was absolutely nothing like that. Redditor 59, what did dying feel like? It felt like my insides were made of jelly on fire, every breath I tried to take was more fire, and my bones magically disappeared. Turns out that last one was because they were broken. Trying to stand on a leg broken in dozens of places is. Well you just can't. 
The moment you put any weight on there, all the broken bits move around and you just fall over. Which also doesn't feel particularly good. It's like, if you've ever had a splinter that was broken glass, but on the inside, everywhere, at the same time. Broken ribs weirdly stopped hurting when they punctured my lung and split open my abdominal wall. Then it just felt like I was really wet and warm, while the rest of me was made of being on fire and also stabbed. How it changed your life? It made everything a thousand times harder, every task takes four times as long, and I have the stamina of wet cardboard. It dramatically drops my ability to relate to other people I'm sure your headache is so terrible, Karen but I can feel my once broken ribs crackling with every breath and my ears haven't stopped ringing in a decade. Please do go on about your stiff neck. It also makes trying to get other people to relate to me incredibly difficult. How do you describe to someone who has never broken a bone what it felt like to have jagged shards of your skeleton tear their way out of you? How do you tell someone about the time a loop of intestines swelled up with normal 8 bean soup gas got trapped in a tear in your abdominal wall and just kept swelling and swelling and swelling until it nearly burst and every second was screaming agony like a TV on white noise at 150 decibels blasting all thoughts out of your brain. All my clothes don't fit right somewhere. Shirt that doesn't squish up against the basketball size scarring on my torso would drape over the rest of me like a circus tent. Pants big enough to fit over the scarring on my lower back, hips, and ass are too wide for my waist and too long for my now shorter cyber leg, even though they fit the normal leg fine. Which means my fashion style is schlub, loose fitting frumpy as duck clothes that make me look like a ball of unfolded wrinkly laundry. It makes most of the things I use to love physically impossible. Can't go hiking because my shiny robot joints cannot handle that kind of strain unless I want them replaced every 10 years. Can't do martial arts because one solid body blow could rip open my already Swiss cheese abdominal core and spill my guts like one of those novelty snakes in a can. Learning new skills is a thousand times harder, since the traumatic brain injury causes my brain to just randomly do memory wipes I can sing the Gummy Bears theme song word for word, but I can't remember something I learned an hour ago. Can't go swimming because four strokes in and I can barely breathe and my limbs are made of lead and pain. I often lose track of what I'm doing, get confused or misunderstand or just plain don't hear someone speaking to me. I'll tell the same stories a thousand times, because I never really know if I've told them before or it could be the only story I can remember that day. It means finding hobbies that don't need much physical ability. It means having to try 10 times as hard to commit things to memory, constantly repeating myself, constantly asking other people to repeat themselves, and even pre-plague spending most of my free time by myself so I'm not dragging anyone else down. It also means having to be far more patient about things, and far more tolerant of mistakes. It means forgiving quickly and easily, since I will likely completely forget whatever the issue was in a matter of days. It means being a weird mix of totally honest and super guarded it's hard as heck to trust people, but when I do, I'll blab for hours about whatever flits in and out of the sieve that is my brain. Then there's the body image thing. Wasn't great beforehand, but after. Oof. Having a team of grown adult professional doctors all stare intently at one's a shoal to see if there's a piece of tailbone trying to work its way out of there is a great way to diminish the shame reflex. But on the other hand, seeing my reflection in the mirror and being able to watch stuff move through my intestines as the skin covering them squishes and roils. Blake. Blake. I simply cannot process the concept of people with not destroyed parts disliking their intact bodies. Boggles the mind. Did you see anything while passed on? For some reason, this question is one that people fixate on. I didn't see any light. Or hear any voices. Or sense anything at all. There was absolutely nothing, which is not the same as darkness or blackness or a void or any of that. If I had to give it a color, be kinda. Tenish. Quiet. Lukewarm. Completely and utterly unremarkable in any way. Redditor 60, I maybe wasn't clinically dead, but I overdosed on pain pills in my parents' guest bedroom. I was in the middle of a really bad opiate addiction and I remember laying in the bed, fading into unconsciousness, feeling my breathing get slower and slower. And then I wasn't in the bedroom anymore. I was in a big mud pit, naked and freezing. Everything was dark and cold. 
I could see myself in third person, and I was trying to crawl out but kept slipping. I was crying, I didn't mean to. Over and over, then I was back in my body, in the pit and I just curled up and cried. I felt so ashamed, sad and disappointed in myself, such a waste of a life. Slowly, a sparkly golden light cloud moved over the top of the pit. It was warm and exuded extreme compassion and love. I cried to it, I'm sorry. I didn't meant to. And with more love and kindness than I could ever describe, it says I know. I woke up to my mom shaking me and crying and yelling my name. I took a ride to the ER via an ambulance and a dose of Narcan later, I was back. I've never forgotten the pit, the feeling of regret or the love that the gold light showed me. This was 15 years ago and I've been opiate free since then. Even went through an occlutier and surgery without opiates, minus what I received in the hospital. My life hasn't been perfect but it's been so much better since I stopped using pain pills. Redditor 61, my appendix burst when I was about 7. I remember a great deal of pain, then the pain evaporated, but only for a few minutes. Then I kind of slumped out. I could hear things for a little while, but even that became distant, almost an echo. Then nothing. I was nowhere and nothing. Like time vanished and fell away. And I didn't have a single care for that in the world. I don't know how much time passed. I've been told, but it still doesn't make much sense to me. My mom swore I came back different. She would say I was more intense and an old soul where I suppose I wasn't before. There isn't much for me to compare it to. Redditor 62, I had an asthma attack at age 15 that landed me in a coma on life support for 10 days. In the dream I was walking along a sidewalk and ended up at Yankee Stadium I am a female from Montana who has never been to New York all of a sudden I am sitting in the empty stands with a man named Joe. I just remember the sun on my face. It felt so good. It was so bright I could hardly see anything but I just remember the feeling of the sun, it's almost indescribable the warmth. Then Joe asked me if I wanted to go. I thought about it and told him I better go home. He smiled. It was such a warm, kind smile from a stranger. I remember just knowing he was kind. He said yeah, you should go home. The next thing I knew I was waking up in a hospital. My memories after that moment are a blur coming off sedation, coming off a ventilator, not knowing how I ended up in the hospital. I spent 30 days in the hospital recovering. It was months later when I came across Joe, it was Joe DiMaggio. I had until that point never known who he was. I saw him on a TV on some sports icon special and the memory of that dream all flooded back. I still wonder if I was really about to be walked across the line by Joe DiMaggio or if it was just some weird ass dream. You see the doctors told my family I wasn't going to make it, they had started funeral arrangements, waited for family to come in to say their goodbyes. My body had been shutting down for 9 days and all of a sudden everything changed, miraculously. So I just wonder. Redditor 63, nothing exciting, actually, nothing at all. I quit breathing and my heart stopped for something like 45 seconds before being resuscitated. Literally there was nothing. I was sitting in a room one minute, the next moment I'm waking up intubated connected to a breathing machine 26 hours later. It's just like sleeping without the dreams, like that time didn't exist. Only one strange thing, no feeling of time passing. When you go to sleep, and wake up, you can like, tell you just slept and are now awake. When I woke up you coulda told me I was unconscious for 1 minute, 5 hours, 5 days or a month, and I wouldn't have known which was true. Redditor 64, it's just blackness and nothingness. No heaven, no hell, those are lies. Just eternal sleep? It's good that way. Redditor 65, when I was about 5 years old I drowned in a pool at a friend's house and it all ended up in me being dead for tilde 2 minutes until the ambulance arrived. It didn't really change me, since I can barely remember anything but I know what I saw. Open field with flowers, no clouds and smells I never smelled in my life. Redditor 66 I had a suicide attempt last year, it was very peaceful, until I was found, but by then I was already losing consciousness. Redditor 67 I went off during a tilt table test I took looking for vasovagal syncope syndrome. I basically started feeling cold, eyesight started going dark, I called it out for the doctor's nurses doing the exam and then that was it. I woke up, 
according to them, a few minutes later after they got all the info they needed. My blood pressure went to 00, zero my beats per minute were under 10. It didn't feel like minutes had passed at all, just felt like I blinked and woke up. Redditor 68, the closer experience I've had to death was overdosing. I always thought that when dying you would have at least time to think well, this is it I guess. But what scares me the most about that experience is that I didn't remember anything about it. It was like going to sleep but not being able to think about anything before it happens. All I remember is doing a line, then waking up to everyone looking really worried but I felt fine. The first thing I asked was where the coke was. Apparently I had seizures and went blue because I couldn't breathe. A friend did RCP on me and that's how I came back. Redditor 69, once I donate blood in a church event. For some reason my blood pressure fell hard, and my brain was shutting down because it wasn't receiving oxygen enough. I felt dizzy, but in a moment I remember I thought that I was safe there, and had friends around me and that is when I felt as I was wrapped on a heavy warm blanket and falling asleep in a very pleasant way. I woke up a seconds later, the paramedics checked on me, as well as a nurse and a doctor friend and everything was okay. Didn't see anything nor anyone, but I remember the pleasant sensation of being in a comfort place. Quite contrasting with three episode of panic attacks. Then I felt I was dying and could do nothing to prevent it. Redditor 70, this happened back in the early 1990s, to my grandmother. I was about 19 at the time. Granny was a wee Scottish-born woman who emigrated to Australia in 1956. She was a sweet, loving woman, who was also tough as nails. She had a long-standing heart condition which was monitored by her doctor. Part of this was having periodical angiograms. It all started when she had to have one of these routine monitoring angiograms. She went in, had the procedure done, spent a day in hospital afterwards and was then discharged home. She lived alone. She started feeling unwell a few days later and took herself to the doctor, just in case. He said she had an infection and gave her antibiotics. She did start to feel better. The next day she came to stay at my family's home because of various family things that were going on, it was just easier for her to stay with us as she didn't have her own car and never drove. Just as well she did. She started feeling unwell again after only a couple of days on the antibiotics, so she saw our family doctor and he gave her something else, but said that if she wasn't feeling significantly better in 48 hours, go to the hospital. It was less than that. By the next day she was vomiting and couldn't even keep plain water down. In the end, my mother insisted on taking her to the hospital. Once there, they took one look at her and took her straight in. I'm not surprised. I have a vivid memory of helping granny into the car and looking at her as we helped her put her seatbelt on. She looked like death warmed up. Once in emergency being tended by the staff, she said I don't feel very well, and she went into cardiac arrest. She was gone for three minutes. I asked her some time afterwards what it felt like and she said that it wasn't scary, but that it was like that soft, warm darkness you experience as you're drifting off right before you fall asleep, only it wasn't for a short time. It felt like hours. That it wasn't like floating or drifting, it was just being. And then in true granny style, she said and then I could hear someone shouting my name over and over again, and can you hear me? Of course I could hear him. I'm no deaf. After the emergency staff had brought her back, she was off to the ICU for the evening and a few days after that. Next morning, in ICU, Granny is demanding breakfast. The doctor came in to see her and discuss what had happened. First thing she says to him is when am I getting out of here? She was never fond of hospitals. He replied something like I honestly couldn't say. According to the test results from last night, you shouldn't be here now. She paused and replied well I haven't got time to die. I've got too much to do. And that pretty much sums her up. She passed away in August 2012, aged 91 and a half. Redditor 71, I was 4 years old at the time and I had pneumonia. I suddenly just stopped breathing in my sleep. My mom called the nurses and doctors and apparently I was dead for 4 minutes. Thanks to those people, I wouldn't be alive today. However, it may sound weird but I saw my future. Like one of those deja vu moments. I didn't realize it until it actually happened. Moving to the event that happened. I was 14 years old, 
and I met someone that would become my friend online via Minecraft. We played all the time together when suddenly one day, I get a message from her older brother, telling me that she was hospitalized. I was so upset and heartbroken. I stayed with her on the phone until she passed away. Her last words were, keep making people happy. Don't forget about me. After hearing those words I felt that sense of deja vu and my heart sank even further. I knew I was going to feel heartbroken at one point in my life, I just didn't know when and how to prevent it. Her name was Adashi and she made me super happy and made me a better person overall. Wish she was here. Redditor72, about 15 years ago I was dropped three stories by a drunk guy who was living in the same dorm as me in Bethel, Alaska. I broke my right arm in three places and severely lacerated my liver. About a week after the fact a piece of the cloth that had formed on my liver dislodged itself and I started bleeding internally. I flatlined for about a minute and then was resuscitated by the doctor before going into emergency surgery. Nothing happened during that minute, no white light, no angels or pearly gates, no fire and brimstone. It was just nothing. However, I can say pretty definitively that that doctor, the nurses, the paramedics, and all of the other medical professionals who helped me saved my life. Redditor 73, I was clinically dead for maybe 10 minutes. I was completely fine one second and dead the next due to heart attack. There was no memory or dream from the time I was gone, just woke up where I left off in the ambulance. In the time before surgery I was struck that I didn't feel regret for my life. There was a comforting sense that it couldn't be any other way. I also didn't want to die but also was not afraid of it, and I'm the sort that would randomly have near panic attacks at the thought of dying. Nothing has changed outwardly in my life, but I'm less anxious paranoid. It was difficult and the most physically and mentally extreme moment of my life, but I'm grateful even for the suffering. It was a positive experience in so many ways. Redditor 74, I was under general anesthesia when I died, so I don't remember it. And thank Duck for that. What I do remember is that I had a dream. I don't recall what the dream was about, because it was completely normal. I genuinely didn't know that anything bad had happened until a nurse told me. But it has changed my life. I have depression and anxiety, and there have been many points in my life where I've just wanted to stop existing. I've never made plans to kill myself or anything, but there are times that I've just wanted everything to end. Well, my death didn't cure that, but it's given me a fresh perspective on life. I am glad to be alive. I saw how much my life meant to those around me. I wake up every day grateful that I can wake up. When someone's heart completely stops like mine did, it's touch and go that it will start again. I have had many medical professionals tell me that I am incredibly lucky that it didn't turn out worse. I definitely feel lucky. Redditor 75, I had a brain surgery back in 2005. I had fallen off our rooftop. It is a traditional average style Japanese home. I fell and cracked my head. Mother rushed me to the hospital on dad's bike. She barely knew how to ride and it was the holidays. But she got me to the hospital. I started getting dizzy, and everything was blurry and I would fall asleep and sister would wake me up. There was a lot of blood loss mother and sister were covered in red. When I was going to operation theater I felt a gentle tickle all over my body and I fell asleep. I woke up half a year later, to my sister next to me. Apparently they nearly declared me dead due to blood loss but my sister and mother were the only ab negatives around and gave their blood. Being dead feels like getting heavy eyelids and falling asleep with also slight lightheadedness and deadpan silence. Too sleepy to talk, type of, redditor 76, I was only 5 weeks old so don't remember anything. The way my mom tells it is that I was born very sickly in 1991. I had to be hospitalized for whatever was going on. She sat in the waiting room and an older black lady came and sat next to her. She told my mom that her granddaughter had just passed and explained how she was feeling. She was, of course, sad, but she had very strong religious beliefs and believed they would one day be reunited so her sadness was bittersweet. She spoke with my mom for a bit about things and just put her at ease. Then she got up and walked off. Shortly after, the doctor came and got my mom and told them that I had died. The nurses had performed CPR for quite some time and the doctor called it. My mom fell apart there. 
Within a few seconds of the doctor telling her that I had died, the doctor was called back to my room. My heart had suddenly started beating again. The doctor couldn't explain it, other than saying that it was a miracle. My mom eventually wanted to go and find the older lady and tell her the news. According to hospital staff, there was no one there who met her description and they did not have any children die there that day. My mom has never been super religious, but she still believes that the woman was an angel or something. As for how the story of my death affects me, I don't know. I'm very laid back and don't sweat small things in life. I don't get worked up. I'm not fearful of death. Not really. I know it is an inevitability and that every moment we have with our loved one should be cherished. When people ask why I'm so calm about things, I usually say something along the lines of I've already died once. Why worry about anything else? Redditor 77, when I was around 14, I got into a school fight over one of my friends that happens to be a female. The person who I had fought, let's call him Mike was harassing her, the typical stuff from, back to the future Biff harassment. One day I just got fed up with it, and I sucker punched him, I was a short skinny kid, and he was the typical high school jock. Well, another thing comes and goes and I'm knocked out, according to the people on the scene, students, teachers, what not, when he hit me I fell back and hit my head on the concrete wall, before falling sideways on the concrete floor this was outside I didn't remember much, it just went black, then I could hear a faint ringing, like a doorbell, or a buzzer, I could hear distant cheering and screaming. It was like I was being pulled away from my body, I couldn't do anything it was almost like I was frozen in space, it felt like only a few seconds, and I could see blurry figures, but it was like I was zoomed out, everything was black around these blurry figure, and just like that I'm slowly waking up, sighting next to me was a paramedic, and another one to my left. Everybody else was gone, as if they put a lock down so nobody bothers them or whatnot. According to them, I was dead for around 25 seconds when they arrived before resuscitated me. Until this day, I was scared, People describe it as peaceful but I was scared, me distantly falling backwards out of the light, into nothingness, no pain, no feeling, just the distant yelling and shouting falling farther and farther away. I was scared, that I would never go back home, and I don't think I am ready to die today either. Redditor 78, my uncle OD'd and died for 20 minutes nothing happened he just woke up screaming. Redditor 79, I died on the operating table after I had a reaction to the general anesthetic so I was already unconscious. I came to as someone was pulling a tube out of my throat which I didn't enjoy. I have no memory of anything, yet I knew. I'm assuming as I was coming round I must have heard something and taken the information and somehow because as soon as I was remotely with it, I asked why I died. Redditor 80, when it happened to me I was a baby my heart stopped for a few seconds but one time when I was little I was sleeping in my parents room and all of a sudden I could not breath for a minute. Redditor 81, I have diabetes and began hallucinating due to extremely low blood sugar. At some point, I began regaining consciousness but couldn't move. I was aware of people moving around me and speaking to me but couldn't respond. It was terrifying. Redditor 82, this whole thread has made me a lot less worried about dying. Redditor 83, this isn't my experience but my cousin's. My cousin got into a bad auto accident about 6 or 7 years before his death. He died twice and was revived. He described the feeling as an intense warmth all around you then waking up. Then the second time the warmth came back with this light he couldn't see past. I hope when he did die he felt that warmth again and was safe. Redditor 84, I've read posts on this before and multiple people saying there was no bright light in the sky or someone waiting to take you somewhere. It scares me I don't want it to be just blackness. Redditor 85, I wonder why some people report experiencing something and others just get oblivion. Some religious people turn to atheists and some the other way around. Redditor 86, the closer you are to death, the less everything hurts. Redditor 87, my dad drowned once, surfing as a teen. He described seeing a white light, and he was trying to reach it and something kept pulling him back into his body. It was all rather peaceful and he said that it made him not fear death. I hope it was just as peaceful when he actually did die three years ago.